Let's cut the crap and let's just talk about how to actually grow an Instagram account in 2022 because my friends, Instagram is far from dead yet, sort of. But taking a look at successful creators, there's a bunch of steps each one of them does, whether it's consciously or not, that makes them grow. No matter whether there's an algorithm change going on or not, which is the thing that most people are afraid of. So, mm -hmm, if you remember, let me show you a system that you just basically have to blindly follow to grow your audience on Instagram. We're sort of getting raw here, <laughs> but sometimes that's actually what it takes. So get a pen and paper, maybe some coffee, or dirty water and do exactly as I say. And the system is what I call the IGBF system, which is by the way, continually updated and going in a lot more depth than here uh, in my mentorship program, the IG Black File, which will soon open again to a bunch of people. So make sure you're on the waiting list if you're interested. And I'll also send some uh, algorithm secrets to your inbox. Anyway, the great thing is this whole system works whether you're just a beginner or if you just wanna restart your strategy, get out of a plateau. Cause chances are you've been doing some steps wrong and sometimes it's good to take a step back. Now, the first step that's sort of actually pretty important, actually one of the most important things that lots of people neglect is actually goal mapping. And let me tell you why this step is actually crucial for all the other steps, all the growth strategies that come along. Let's say this is a timeline, if you will. You're here and basically just take a second and think about where do you ultimately want to be? What do you ultimately want to achieve, especially, you know, with your Instagram account? Do you want to grow a personal brand or do you want to grow a business? you know, at the end of the day, right? Or you just want to grow a theme page, which uh, probably is not a real goal. Goal, if you ask me, it should be, it could be, and we're gonna talk about this here in this video. It could be just like a stepping stone, to be honest as well. But the important thing being, ask yourself in an ideal situation, what do you want to achieve, right? Where do you ultimately want to end up? At the end of the day, probably want to earn some money with your influence that you make through your social media. Also at the top of your head, what might be your uh, favorite way to make that money along the way? Cause this is the important part because let's say you wanna have some brand deals, for example, six figure brand deals, or you wanna create a digital product or an online course. Because if you have that at the back of your head, we can then go along and then you can sort of map out your ideal strategy and baby steps to grow that. The next part of the equation your strategy that you ultimately are gonna, strategy that you ultimately are gonna build from your goal stuff. And if you don't have clear goals, you're just dangling around and you can never really map out a, a strategy that will ultimately work out for you, like I'm gonna show you right now. And this is where we go deep into research, finding out content ideas, mapping out your, the follower journey to set all of these things up for the next step, which is gonna be the growth part naturally. Now, obviously, as you go along, you might need to readjust your strategy because yeah, the world's just not a linear thing. But without any clear strategy, what you do is hope marketing, right? You just hope everything works well. But um, yeah, you're actually not doing real marketing based on certain strategic decisions and that data points. And the first thing you're gonna do is research, right? Research. <laughs> yeah, won't fit. First of all, research your niche. Go on Instagram and take a look at similar creators. Try to go as in-depth as possible. Figure out emerging creators, you know, smaller emerging creators. Try to see what are they doing right now that works well, especially important because, yeah, things work out for them right now, but also take a look at bigger creators. See, maybe you can spot, you know, spot some patterns. The important thing all across social media, actually, when you want to grow a brand, try to spot patterns, especially content formats that work well for, for them in your niche, obviously, you know, whether it be reels, certain reels, certain story techniques that they do or a certain way they structure their posts, you know, you get the idea. Go as in-depth as possible, but don't just take a look at the, the things that work really well. Try to find similar creators that have the opposite going on for them. They're sort of losing steam right now and try to find why, figure out why that is the case. Maybe you've been following some people because, you know, ideally your niche is something that you're <laughs> obviously interested in. So maybe you've been following some people and you're like, yeah, they, they're just boring, stuff like this. So take a look at this and uh, note it down just so you know what you might want to avoid doing. But as for setting up your actual strategy, you're gonna have to ask yourself, a bunch of questions in order to make that work out for you before you actually start creating the first piece of content. I always say it's really important to keep creating content and shooting out that content piece after content piece because you get experience, because you sort of start to get a feel for it, but before you still need to do some groundwork. First of all, ask yourself, you know, note down on a piece of paper, what is the main 
thing why people want to consume your content what is the number one thing people come no, that's not a one uh, people come to you uh, to take a look at your content then about the format the rough format is it gonna be educational or is it gonna be entertainment first? Or maybe it's gonna be something totally different, like a news-based channel. Like a lot of people don't even know about that. Yeah, there's news-based channels, very underrated thing right now, actually, to be honest, on Instagram. But uh, yeah, based around that, and you can mix a little bit. But also in terms of form, what is your main channel, content channel gonna be like in terms of are you gonna focus mostly on reels? Is it gonna be regular posts or carousels or a mix? Ideally, you have a mix, to be honest. But in my opinion, you should have at least 70 to 80% of your content focused on one, one outlet first, just so, especially in the beginning, just so you don't get overwhelmed. Right now, still, the big outlets Instagram promotes like crazy are obviously reels. We talked about that a lot. Also carousels, but, and we've noticed some slight changes in the algorithm in the past few weeks. They've recently started to promote single picture posts again, a little bit more than they used to, especially with the suggested post feature. And based with your research that you've done, if you take a look at all these things combined, you should have a pretty clear picture of content that performs well right now what you wanna start to emulate. So let's talk about the content creation part, which is in my opinion, the most important part, especially if you start out. Lots of people sort of neglect the content creation part, especially in the beginning, and just try to get their first followers as quickly as possible. But that's sort of the wrong way to go about it because you're gonna mess up the whole understanding the algorithm has about your content, about your profile. But we're gonna talk about that in a bit. So number three, the content part. And this is where, like I said, I see most people slack off. Actually, it used to be that you could just grow pretty crazily on Instagram using just a bunch of hacks. Not anymore, the content game has changed quite a bit. And that's why I see so many bigger creators that sort of got their start earlier on four, five, six years ago have problems right now with their engagement because a lot of the times their followers were not really interested in their content to begin with, to be honest. Now, since you've done your research, ideally you've mapped out similar creators, especially smaller, more emerging ones, you should pretty much know what works and what doesn't in your niche, especially taking a look, like I said, at uh, smaller emerging creators. And now it's time to simply start creating similar content to yeah, actually get the foot off the door, right? Similar content. Here's the thing though. Here's the thing where most people go wrong. First of all, don't reinvent the wheel. You know, don't just come out with lots of crazy ass content nobody really has seen before. Unfortunately, that's not how the world works right now at this point. Also not how the algorithms work. And this whole thing is true, whether you grow a theme page or a personal brand or anything in between, replicating performing content will get the whole game started. Now there's actually tools to help you figure that out, figure out highly performing content, uh, things for you to actually get some inspiration for content that you can replicate. For example, Hashtastic has something called the Viral Post Finder, which is something that we use in our agency, for example. But there's also a tool called Viral Finder that's actually pretty great, especially for finding a general direction and actual winning post post ideas that you can then emulate along the way. Here's the thing though, do not blatantly copy the content, right? <laughs> Especially when, it, when you wanna grow a theme page, for example. I see it so many times, people just repost other content on their theme page uh, or on their personal brand and give the OG author credit and that's it. Bad move, really bad move. Do you really think you can make a real impact in the sense of being memorable to others just by copying stuff and just putting it in there? Yeah, probably not so much. Instead, get inspired by it. Put your own spin on it. Branding being really important in the sense of what's your look and feel on your whole page, you know? The whole vibe, which uh, should ideally match with your target audience as well. And to be honest, it's not really that much extra effort to, let's just say, uh, take a viral post, put five minutes of thought into it, how you can sort of make it your own, and then you know just create your own content with it. Now, as for content forms that bring you a little bit more traffic than the others, obviously the one thing being real reels right now and uh here's one important thing to know about especially for people who have been stuck in a plateau for example or for people who thought their account was pretty much dead creating reels consistently can get you out of this whole issue you know because it's a whole new algorithm that can push your content to a new audience right to a total different new audience and if the new audience comes back to you you're gonna grow a different audience re sort of reset the algorithm. Now, as for reels, especially when you want to start out, you want to at least make one post a day, one reel a day, if you can manage to pull that off. You know, make this whole thing a habit. Uh, some of them are gonna suck. 
you know, but honing the skill itself is gonna be very valuable, especially for the future. Another pro tip, if you wanna get into Reels, which I would totally recommend you, is also create a TikTok account, you know, and upload your Reels there as well. Their algorithms are just a ton better. So first of all, you're likely getting more reach faster on TikTok. Plus, because of that, you're gonna get valuable insights about your content because, yeah, because you just get more reach. And then implement whatever you learned over on TikTok uh, back to your whole content strategy on Instagram. And the other thing is you all have an audience. You also grow another audience on another platform. Always really good. But here's the thing that I also see a lot of people do wrong is you know, just creating reels and then they wonder, why Dominic, why don't I have a real connection with your audience? It seems like they just watch my reels, they don't really like, they don't give me a lot of comments, they don't really interact with me. And this is the big issue what I see with uh, short form content, at least right now at this point. If you wanna build a really strong connection with your audience, don't just focus on reels, right? And that's a great thing about Instagram, although, you know, it's. it's starting to get a little bit confusing with the whole content formats that you can do on uh, Instagram. Stories being really important to build a connection, especially because this whole thing is less polished. And that's what people want to see in this fake social media world, less polished content, more things to relate with you. Also, you know, think of less polished content bits that you can create otherwise. Uh, for example, a regular post, stuff like this. But the basic thing is, don't just focus on reels when you grow a real sustainable Instagram brand. Now talking about post frequency, a lot of people have that question. You sort of want to find that sweet spot between quantity and quality. It's very important on Instagram, on YouTube, for example, I'd say 100% quality over quantity. But with Instagram, it's pretty much a mix. Uh, if you really want to see results faster, post at least once a day, right? Whatever that is. Uh, you know, that, that's basically what you want to aim for, especially with reels. But if you can do more, do more, obviously. Don't burn yourself out though. All right, now you should have some sort of pretty active account with great content up until this point. You ideally should, after a few weeks to months, should, should start getting organic traffic. The one or the other post is gonna pop. Ideally, you have optimized your profile and your content like we talk about in lots of other videos uh, here on this channel. So if people start to finally take interest in you, you should have made it as frictionless as possible for them to actually hit that follow button. Until that actually happens, there's a bunch of methods that you could be doing to sort of help the algorithm figure out who they should recommend you to. For example, using interaction strategies that we've covered in detail also here in this channel. You know, your smart kids, you'll find the videos. And if you participate in the Reels Challenge, for example, you'll also get a free workbook where we talk about parts of this strategy as well. But basically what you wanna do is go to similar creators, check out symbols, whatever, check out the people who engage with them, with their similar content that you have, and uh, yeah, engage just with the engagers. Yeah, commenting valuable stuff, you know, starting a conversation, stuff like this. Important thing is don't be spammy and don't be promotional in any sort. Don't say, check out my profile. I do similar stuff. No. If you do that, and we have a video outlining this very process here in this channel to get at least your first 1,000 followers, and it still holds true to this day, you should, you know, get some initial more traction training the algorithm. But there's also more ways to fuel the algorithm, if you will. For example, by doing collaborations with smaller accounts, same accounts, uh, or sort of hijacking bigger pages by convincing them to give you a shout out. Yeah, or by just simply buying a shout out. And shout outs, if done correctly, could be massive. You know, and if especially if the right person shouts you out, you could get tons, thousands of laser targeted followers that will also solidify, further solidify, whoop, the algorithm for you and making it easier to recommend your content. And shout outs don't have to be that expensive. You can get for, for 20, 50, 100 bucks. You could get pretty far if done correctly. Now for the new ones among you who've never seen this channel before, don't use any method that will artificially inflate stuff or automate stuff. You know, for example, engagement groups or bots, basically anything that make it seem like you can cut corners because you just can't right now. By now, the Instagram algorithms are so mighty that, you know, when you feed them actually with the right data, like we just talked about here in this video, they will actually start to recommend your content. I promise you that. And that's actually a big thing why people think they are shadow banned, even though they're they're not really shadow banned. It's because they just confuse the hell out of the algorithms by feeding them with fake engagement and sort of trying to cut corners. Now, 
all of these things that we talked about right here should get you, you know, in a few months. And sometimes things just take some time if you want to sustainably grow. But these things will get you to a baseline growth of, let's just say, 20 to 100 followers per day. At least if you actually do the things that we talked about. Yes, I know there's a million other things out there before you write the comments. Well, it just scratches the surface. You know, especially more advanced level things. But to be completely honest with you, my friends, especially those who don't have that big of a following yet. A lot of people get caught up in those advanced strategies and small little tricks that make a big difference, especially if you have a lot of followers, but especially when they're just trying to get started, especially when they're trying to grow a baseline of followers, they just get lost along the way, lose track, sort of neglect the important basics that will actually set them up on a growth path. And only then, when you see a certain amount of baseline growth, 20 followers a day at least, this is when you should actually start start to think about some advanced stuff, you know, like going deep into analytics, advanced hashtag strategies, algorithm triggers, and you know, other things that could be really overwhelming for some. And if you're like, yeah, I want a fully mapped out, no BS strategy, a strategy that you can implement in your unique situation to grow your Instagram brand, I'll soon be opening my Instagram black file program again, where we basically go over everything, everything about Instagram. You know, this probably just being 0.5% of what we actually talk about in there. We go very deep into the algorithm, certain parts of the algorithm, triggers, content strategies to build an audience connection as well as to trigger algorithms, building a real brand, obviously, and uh, making money with this whole thing. Also, we have weekly algorithm updates in there right now, new strategy alerts, and you know, basically lots of things because things are always changing on Instagram, especially the algorithm. And also, you know, before I forget, you get direct access to me being able to ask me pretty much anything you ever wanted. Uh, you know, there's profile reviews, but yeah. Now we're only gonna open for a limited amount of time. Pretty soon, uh, it'll probably be a little bit later than I initially wanted. <laughs> Cause uh, yeah, there's a bunch of new things that I just figured out that I just want to have in there. But uh, if you are interested, and actually working with me and uh, being in our closely knit community, get on the waiting list right here and I'll send you even some Instagram algorithm secrets along the way in a few days, my friends.